Right now, we bring on Dallas Cowboys COO Stephen Jones. Sir, how are you today? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing well. We're good. We appreciate you working alongside with us. Thank you very much for still doing this on Labor Day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I, I know that there are a ton of complexities to your job. Is this traditionally the busiest weekend of the year for you and the staff with the cuts, with the signings, with the workings of the waiver wire, with everything like that. Is this usually your busiest weekend or like how does this stack up versus say the draft? Well, it probably, the draft probably still got the most moving parts to it because of the length of it. And, you know, we're leading up to, uh, uh, you know, our time to make our cuts there on Saturday, you're pretty much on the page with it. So, uh, you know, you've kind of been, uh, not kind of been, you've been sitting in personnel meetings for four or five, you know, different times. Usually there's eight or nine times, but this year is four or five different personnel meetings. So you're really getting your hands around who you want to have around. And as you can see, you make very uh, few moves. We were really proud of our draft class, really proud of our college free agent class and knew that they were going to make up the majority of our, you know, back end of our roster as well as uh, our practice squad. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think we uh, you know, signed two new, uh, two new uh, defensive uh, or practice squad players, and uh, we put a receiver on the on the fifty three. So, you know, there wasn't a lot of uh, you know a lot of changes. And then I, I did leave out Brandon Carr. Obviously, he's going on the practice squad, and depending on how his week goes, has the ability uh, certainly to move up to the uh, uh, to the. Uh, to play uh, with the exemptions you have now with the practice squad. Right, I'm glad you mentioned Brandon Carr because obviously there was a lot of rumor and innuendo about you guys going after a defensive back that used to be associated with the Ravens. And as we all guessed, it was Brandon Carr. <laughs> yeah, probably not uh, what everybody was thinking, but, you know, we have a great history with Brandon. Uh, last year he really did a nice job for the Ravens uh, playing uh, some safety and nickel and great matchup with tight ends. So, uh, you know, just uh, he, he's always been somebody that uh, we, you know, really liked in terms of having him around as a Dallas Cowboy. Certainly he takes great care of himself and, you know, feel like uh, when we get him, you know, getting him in here is going to be a big plus for us and that, uh, you know, he can really uh, help out back there. Was there ever a plan to meet with Earl Thomas or can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, we can't really. I mean, I, you know, don't like to comment on players sure. who aren't on this team. And uh, uh, certainly we're, we're real happy with our roster and uh, made some, a couple of good additions there. But really, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're really pleased with the makeup of our roster. Did you enjoy kind of the, the new rules with the differential in time of the injured reserve and some of the things that you were able to do? Did it make it more complicated? Did it make it more fun? You know, it, it just takes getting your hands around it, but it does, uh, you know, bring more pieces to the puzzle in terms of uh, the exempt list and the, uh, you know, the ability to move practice squad players up, uh, you know, without them counting on your 53. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts that uh, uh, are going to be interesting this year. And uh, certainly I think we've got our hands around them. It's just a matter of uh, executing and, you know, taking advantage of uh, anything and everything we can that are within the rules. Dallas Cowboys Chief Operating Officer Stephen Jones joining us on the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan. Stephen, you're always watching the market for all players involved, and obviously one of the most excited players on this football team is one Dak Prescott. We saw Deshaun Watson get his four-year $160 million contract this weekend. When you think about his negotiations and how those will look going forward, is there anything you would have changed, particularly with Dak Prescott's negotiations, looking back on it as the market has continued to evolve? You know, we just uh, continue to want to get Dak signed. Uh, You know, obviously, uh, uh, we're totally all in on him. It's just, uh, you know, finding that contract that makes sense for both the Cowboys and Dak. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, obviously, you see other deals getting done. As I I think I saw where where Dak uh, was quoted as saying that, uh, you know, he's fired up about his future here in Dallas and understands, uh, you know, some of these uh, – some of these things can be different in terms of uh, ultimately getting a deal. And, uh, but I, I feel very confident we'll get one. And, 
you know, of course, I'm sure Dak feels the same way. We'd love to have it in the rear view mirror, but it's not. And we'll continue to address it. And, uh, certainly, uh, uh, feel very confident that we ultimately get something done. We saw the news that Lyle Collins and Sean Lee were going to go on the injured reserve. Jordan Lewis, what is was there any surprise for those first two having to go on IR? And then what is the status of Jordan Lewis even for this week or going forward? Well, I think uh, certainly uh, as we got down to it, we wanted it's a long season and uh uh, Lyle and Sean have been battling some things that we think it's just in their be- best interest to really focus on uh, getting 100% well. And so so they were obvious. And then, uh, of course, Jordan Lewis and uh, Gifford will be, uh, you know, game time decisions in terms of uh, uh, whether they make it this week or next. Felt like uh, the latest, it would be the second game. And uh, didn't feel like it was the right thing to do to put them over there. Uh, two good players that we can certainly use. Uh, to win games with. And then, uh, you know, uh, obviously Xavier's a, a question mark as well, but uh, I think he's even further along than uh, than all of them. So uh, I feel real good about him playing. And we're just uh, barring some setback, uh, we feel good about it. Any other players that you might lump on that list of we'll see if they can uh, be able to go because we're here. We're in the season now. There we It's time to roll. But, no, I think those are the – you know, the biggest question marks of, of all are just the uh, are Gifford and uh, Jordan Lewis and uh, also uh, Xavier. Now, talk with Stephen Jones right here on 105 Through the Fan. We talked with Jerry on Friday, and I asked him about Randy Gregory. And the way he phrased it, he goes, oh, I'm well aware of everything happening in the Randy Gregory situation. I wish he would have just tipped us off that he was going to get reinstated that day. Did y'all have any idea the decision was coming down on Friday? And what is your excitement level for him, the football player, and him, the human? Well, I'm first of all fired up about him, the human. Uh, he certainly made a lot of progress. He's really doing well uh, as a person and uh, off the field. And then, of course, it goes without saying what we think about him as a player. He's he's a really gifted uh, football player that uh, you know has made a lot of plays for us a couple of years ago and. You know, obviously he's uh, coming back and it's just going to add to uh, what we think is a, you know, a really stout defensive front. And uh, you can't have enough of these pass rushers. And, you know, being able to keep them fresh is so key. Some of these guys, that you know, when you need them the most late there in the fourth quarter, they've, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're maxed out and, you know, fighting uh, the fatigue part of it. And, you know, if we can keep these guys fresh throughout the game and, you know, keep their pitch count to a level where they can uh, be firing on all cylinders when we need to stop somebody in the fourth quarter to win the game, then uh, certainly he adds to that. And uh, uh, he's a really true blue pre- pressure player and I uh, feel really good uh, about the progress he's made and feel really good that uh, he's all in on uh, on getting to the football field. Dallas Cowboys Chief Operating Officer Stephen Jones joining us on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Made some news, Stephen, over the weekend with Tristan Hill and his role on this football team. Can you expound on how good you're feeling about him and how he's been able to put himself in this kind of position to be a potential starter on this team? Well, my hat's off to him. Obviously, he was in a, a situation last year where we had uh, you know quite a few guys there uh, that he was competing with, and plus uh, you know, a little bit he's grouped in where we've been very fortunate that a lot of our rookies have stepped right in and played. But, uh, you know, he got his feet wet last year, and and no way were we down on him. I think sometimes when, you know, you have a rookie who's inactive uh, for a little bit, uh, you tend to, uh, you know, everybody tends to want to point to, well, is he, you know, did they did they miss on him? Did they hit on him? What happened to him? And certainly he's shown uh, about it while we were so optimistic about him in the draft, picking him there with our – what turned out to be our first pick that year, but with our second round pick. And, you know, he's, he's just come in and never missed a beat when McCoy went down. And uh, uh, he's uh, been 110% and uh, really playing at a high level right now and deserves to be the starter. Now, we talked about this just a second ago, but we are finally here. It is finally time to play football. Was there a time at all over the last six months that you or Jerry or the organization thought this thing's not going to happen? Well, you, you know, uh, to go through the, all the 
varying views that you have of it when this virus first hit you you know you're thinking well this thing's way out there we're going to be fine you know by the time our season rolls around it'll be you know it'll be in the rear view mirror and then of course when it didn't didn't happen and it kept uh you know kept uh staying around uh then we certainly realized that we uh had a challenge and uh you know my hat's off to uh, the league office, I think our medical staff led by Jeff Miller and Dr. Sills have done an outstanding job of putting a plan in place uh, to not only keep our players safe, but keep our coaching staff safe, our, uh, safe, our football uh, staff safe. And uh, I think ultimately we've got a great plan in place. Uh, uh, albeit I know some people might raise their eyebrow a little bit that we uh, can meet all the CDC, uh, CDC guidelines, socially distance and wear masks and, uh, you know, have a have a safe environment for our fans to watch the Cowboys, albeit it won't be anything like, uh, you know, we normally have in terms of having a full house. It's, uh, uh, I think it's going to be outstanding that, uh, you know, we have our fans out there. I think it'll be great for our players to see, uh, you know, how bad they want to be out there and support them and uh, just feel like, uh, you know, after going through this for, I guess, over a month now of really uh, being in and around and how we're testing and, you know, how we're creating this safe environment that, uh, you know, I feel like we're going to pull this off and uh, that we're going to have all our games and, uh, you know, we're going to have a season, which I, I just think is outstanding. It's uh, our players want it, our, our staffs want it, our, uh, I know our fans want, want to have it, so uh, we're fired up about it. Dallas Cowboys Chief Operating Officer Stephen Jones joining us on the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan uh, Stephen, it is Labor Day. Folks hopefully have some opportunity to maybe take some rest and get the day off today. Uh, tell us about the one time, Stephen, where you may have had to potentially uh, work at Wendy's and uh, what you learned from that particular lesson that day. <laughs> well, it was a, uh, uh, you know, my father was, believe it or not, even though, you know, we were, uh, he was very successful uh, when I was growing up. Uh, you know, he was very, uh, you know, very much a disciplinarian in terms of wanting not only me, my brother and sister to really have a good work ethic. And one of the things he allowed me to do rather than hold a job was to, uh, uh, was to work, uh, you know, work out and that'd be my job. But I'd spend between the lifting and the running and I was a quarterback. So I was throwing, uh, you know, to make a day of it and, uh, like you would, uh, holding a job at a fast food restaurant or something like that. One day he surprised me and came home early, and I had a, a pool full of uh, friends. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't our deal, so he kind of gave me the old come this way, and he had my suit laid out uh, out on the bed and said, hey, we're going for a job interview. Obviously, you can't, uh, you know, you're not being accountable here, and you're not getting the job done, so we'll just get you a job. So I went up and interviewed at Wendy's, and the guy offered me a job and said, well, here I go. I guess I deserve this, and I got in the car, and, he said, how did that sound to you there back cleaning grills and, uh, you know, flipping burgers and versus working out? And I said, well, yes, I deserve it. And uh, he said, well, i tell you what, one more chance. I catch you in that house one more time. Uh, I'll, I'll let you have one more shot at it or you want to do Wendy's? And I said, I think I'll take the working out and you won't catch me, which he didn't. You won't catch me near that house. Outstanding. That's outstanding. Now I want a sponsorship with the Cowboys and Wendy's. We can make this happen. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Stephen. We you, like Steven. talking with you every week, and obviously the entirety of the Metroplex is amped up now that it's go time. Yeah. Well, y'all are about appreciate being on with you, and we're fired up about the season, and hopefully we'll get to visit again soon. Absolutely. We'll catch you next week. Stephen Jones, Dallas Cowboys CEO, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, the Dallas Cowboys get after it with the Rams. Did you know you can hear that right here on 105.3 The Fan? Yes, sir.